Hey guys, it's Jordan Hetrick. Thanks again for watching and thanks for the support. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use an effect called Parallax 2.5D to add some movement to your photos so that you can incorporate them into your videos and make them more interesting. I'll be using Quick for Desktop and Photoshop CC for this tutorial, so let's check it out and hopefully it gives you some good inspiration. I shot this original clip on the GoPro Hero 6 Black using the 4K 4-3 resolution because I was planning to pull some frames out of it. Because it's only at 30 frames per second, I couldn't do slow-mo to play this back in a video. So I'm going to show you a way where you can extract a frame out of your videos or use a still photo and add some movement to it using an effect called Parallax 2.5D. I'm in Quick for Desktop here, and if you're starting from a video, the first thing you want to do is make a shorter clip to choose from. If you select these scissors down here, that'll let you make a shorter clip. And then when you scroll through it, you can actually see frame by frame to choose the frame you want to use. Once you select the frame that you want to use, just select this icon down here, grab a photo, and then you can save that frame as a photo to use. So right click over the thumbnail that you just created, or control click on a Mac, and say show in Finder. That's going to show you which folder it's located in on your computer. Then right click again, or control click on a Mac, and say open with Adobe Photoshop CC. You need to be using Photoshop CC for this to work because the video layer they added is a new feature of Photoshop CC. So once you have your picture open in Photoshop, click on the layers so you can see your layers you have there. You should have a background layer. Drag that layer down to the bottom to duplicate it, right here, this icon. And I have two duplicated layers. So click on the background layer. And what we want to do is isolate the subject from the background and create two layers, one with just the subject and one with just the background. Then we're going to use movement to create an effect that the subject is going into the background. There are a number of ways you can select your subject so you can isolate your subject from the background. You could use the magic wand tool or a lasso tool or even the pin tool. However, I'm going to use select and mask. So you can go up here to select, select and mask. Right now it's got a red filter over it. And I'm just going to use that, it's called Overlay. And if that's not showing up, you can hit V on your keyboard and it should turn to Overlay. Then I'm going to go up here and grab the Quick Selection tool and make sure it's on plus, that's going to add to the mask. And then I'm just going to go over the subject and click and reveal the subject. And it does a pretty good job of selecting light colors. So I like using this tool because it's pretty easy. And you can use Command Plus and Command Minus to zoom in and zoom out. Make sure you've got all of the subject masked out. And the more accurate you have it, the better it's going to look. It's, it's easier if you have it against a simple background, like this is a pretty simple water background. The more complicated your background, the harder it's going to be to isolate your subject and select your subject. But you can use the Plus and Minus tools to add to it, or if you selected too much, you can use the Minus tool here to erase some of the mask. After you have your subject selected, Go here to Feather and just bring that up to about one pixel and then click OK. Now on the layer mask here, right click and say add mask to selection and then click to the duplicated layer up here that we created and we're going to copy the subject and paste the subject onto a new layer. So you do Command C is copy and Command V is going to paste the subject onto a new layer. So see you can turn off this bottom layer here, we don't need that one anymore. And if you click off the background there, you'll see that it's just the subject isolated here. So I'm going to turn it back on, and I'm actually going to turn off the top layer here with just the subject, and click on this background layer. Now we're going to select a rough area around the subject. I find if there's some more of the background in the selection, that it does a better job of filling in the area. So just go up here to the lasso tool, and you can select that, and then click and just drag around the subject, kind of a rough area. You could use the selection you made before to use the exact area, but I find it does better if you have a rough area. And make sure that closes when you're done. You'll see an O, and make sure that you close that loop. And then go here, edit, go fill, and select here content aware. That's going to take the area around the selection and try to fill it in and match it. So it usually does a pretty good job, but let's see here. So we're going to click OK and it's assessing the area and then it fills it in. You can do select, deselect. You can see it did a pretty good job of filling in the background here. If you need to clean up your area, you can use the clone stamp right here and adjust the size of it and just 
do alt or option click and you can just bring over some different areas if you want to clean that up. Depending on how it filled that in, it should be okay, but if you see any areas that need correction, just go ahead and use that clone stamp to, to kind of fix that. Now we can go ahead and turn the subject back on by clicking right here. And then we're going to convert both of these layers to smart objects. So you're on background copy, just right click and choose convert to smart object. And then do that for this layer too with the subject, convert to smart object. Now hold down command and click on the background copy layer and both of those layers should be selected there. Now we're going to create a new file, so go file, new. Then on the presets up here you can go to film and video if you're doing a 1080 file and choose this one. It's going to be 1920 at 1080 and it'll fill it in there. I would suggest going up to 150 pixels per inch just because you can. You're going to have the extra pixels in the photo so you might as well make it a little higher quality. I'm making this one for a 4K video so I'm going to put in 4K dimensions which is 3840 by 2160 at 150 pixels per inch and then create. Now I'm going to change tools. I'm going to click on the other file here, the one we were just working on, and drag these two layers over to that new file we created. Then I'm going to move them so there's no white edge there. And I'm going to do Command T, which is Transform, and Command minus, so I zoom out a little. And just make sure this little chain is clicked so it doesn't distort your image. And I'm going to scale them down so they're just the size of the background here that I just created. Now you can move it around a little depending on your scene. I'm going to move it down just a little bit because I want to keep that pole in there just to show that it's a GoPro shot. But I'm also going to have a little more of the sand. And then click enter to apply that transformation. Now I'm going to put it into a video timeline. So go up here to window and go click on timeline there. And at the bottom here you'll see create video timeline. You can just click that. And now you've got your two layers on a video timeline. So what we're going to do is Expand the first layer here by clicking this little arrow and click on the stopwatch here for transform. You'll see the markers here at the beginning of the video timeline. So that set a keyframe there for this layer one, which is the subject. Now I'm going to move it to the end here and click on the keyframe right here. It's going to add another keyframe at the end. And now I'm going to do command T and transform the subject a little bit smaller. Make sure the chain is clicked again so you don't distort the image. And then we'll do it just like that, so a little bit smaller there. And then click enter to apply that transformation. And now go back to the beginning of the timeline again and go to the background copy right here and expand that by clicking the arrow down. Now click on transform, click the little stopwatch. And I added a keyframe at the beginning for this background copy too. Now scroll to the end of the video clip. And then Command T, we're going to transform that one too. And instead of making that smaller, we're going to make it a little bit larger. So click the chain and then expand it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to move it that way a little. And then click Enter to apply that transformation. Now if you scroll back to the beginning of the clip, you'll see that the movement is being applied. If you want to preview it at a lower frame rate than it really is going to be when you export it, you can click play here. And you can see that the subject is getting smaller as the background is getting larger, creating an almost 3D-like effect. If you want to adjust them more after you've previewed it, you can just go to the end. For example, make sure you're on the background copy, and then you can just click transform again, command T and you can transform it if you'd like to adjust it, however you'd like to change it, and then click enter again. When you're happy with the look of it, just go up here to File, Export, and Render Video. You can give it a name, call it Parallax. Select where you want to save it. I'll save in the Parallax folder, choose that. Then you can choose the encoding. There's presets for YouTube here. It's got a 1080p one. I'm just going to use that and then change the size because I'm doing it for 4K. I'm going to do 3840 by 2160. And the rest of my footage is at 23.97, so I'm going to use that. And then click render and it's going to create a video for you. When that's done exporting, you can just save your file as a PSD so you can go back and make any changes if you don't like the way that it turned out. 
Let's go file, save as PSD. You've got a copy of that. Then go into the folder where you save the file. You can double click on that and watch it and you'll see that it plays a lot smoother than where you previewed it in Photoshop. Thanks again for watching and thanks for the support. I hope that gives you some ideas and inspiration for some ways to incorporate still photos or frame grabs into your next video clip. Until next time.